That worked. Okay, good. So this is the Cisco InterCloud Marketplace. This is the agenda. I want to give an overview. I want to talk about openness, show a, a quick video, and then open it up to Q&A. So, and if you guys have questions, go ahead and ask. We'll keep it interactive. We don't have a lot of folks here, so let's take advantage of that. And uh, so, this is the world we live in today. It's a world of many clouds. You've got public clouds, you've got private clouds, you've got partner clouds, you have Cisco clouds. And within each of these clouds, you have different applications and services. They're, they're, they're different, right? And if you want to consume an app or a service, you pretty much have to go to that cloud to do that. And you have to learn what that cloud does, you have to get smart about it, and that makes consuming applications, services, and solutions difficult. And if you're an administrator within IT, um, you're living in this world too, and this world is even probably more complex for you because you've got multiple hypervisors to deal with and, and all the complexities that go around with that. And ultimately, what the inter-cloud is attempting to do and is doing is connecting these clouds, hence the name inter-cloud. So, what Cisco did in the mid to late 90s with IP and networking, so you know, there, you'll hear Fiaz if you, you were in the earlier session, talk about you know, DECnet and all these things I don't know about, uh, but I know about IP because Cisco helped promote it. It was an open standard, and we're basically attempting and will succeed, hopefully, in, in, in making this inter-cloud thing work, and it's all about openness, so we can get all these disparate clouds to work together. Because if this doesn't happen, these guys win, right? These guys get all the workloads, and it's a Hotel California, it's a Roach Motel. Workloads go again, they never come out, right? So that may be good for these guys and these guys, and for me, because I'm a shareholder in this, right? And they used to work there. But that's probably bad for most of us in this room and, and most of us who are attending this show. Um, so. That's really what the intercloud means to me, and what ultimately the marketplace fits into all this is we're the e-commerce engine for this. We're the aggregation point for the applications, services, and solutions for the intercloud. And we all understand what e-commerce is, so I think it's pretty straightforward in, in what we're doing. And what I want to demonstrate next is something that we're working on. I don't have this today, but this is, this is something that's going to be unique to Cisco. You'll hear a little bit more about that in 30 minutes in the uh, Cloud Keynote, which I encourage everybody, if you need to leave a little early and go to that, please do. Um, but on the left-hand side, you have the Cisco Cloud, InterCloud Marketplace. On the right-hand side, this is, happens to be this, the Cisco Prime Service Catalog. It could be Telstra's Marketplace. It could be DT's Marketplace. And ultimately what I'm representing here is the exportation of an app, this, in this case it's Meraki, into an on-prem catalog. And we, we intend to enable that, right? We want to take offers that are available in the, in the intercloud marketplace and bring them into your on-prem data center. We also want to allow this service catalog and unique applications that are built here to be imported into the intercloud marketplace for broader distribution. And that's very unique, no one's doing that today. It's very difficult to do that, and that's something that we're, we're working on building out. And um, it will also generate unique selection. So one of the reasons we're here in the DevNet booth is we're also working on attracting developers so they build that next killer app for IoT, IOE, big data, through the marketplace in terms of like, you know, getting the tools that they need on top of PaaS's like Apprenda and Staccato and OpenShift that they'll get out of the marketplace and, and access through, through DevNet and the intercloud marketplace. And so this is something that's coming, we're working on it, um, and I thought I'd share that with you guys today, um, but keep it under wraps. The, um, so I want to talk a little bit about openness. and. For me, this is a, it's, it's a, it's a personal story because um, while I'm wearing a suit, I'm also wearing a tie-dye t-shirt because I've, I've gotten a few battle scars in this world of openness and, you, and if you were in the FIAS and Lou 
conversation earlier, they talked a lot about openness and OpenStack. Well, it turns out that um, five years ago, basically to this day, um, this team and myself launched OpenStack. So this is the Swift team at Rackspace. I'm the product manager. That's me. That's a younger, uh, better looking version of me, less gray hair and more hair. Um, and this is the Swift team. And basically, so if you heard of Lou talk about Rackspace cloud files, that's the team. So we, we, we created this product, launched it, spent about $10 million. It works fabulously. And I get a tap on the shoulder from the SVP saying, hey, George, can you do this again? I said, no. Do you think we can compete and win against, uh, and this is the CEO of Rackspace at the time, Lanham, and, and he's asking the same question. Can we compete against Amazon and win? No. Well, what's the answer? Um, change the strategy. And the strategy was ultimately, let's take this code and open source it. And they pitched it to me, and I said, what's open source? Didn't know what it was. And so this is you know, my journey in this and why it's important. And ultimately, it's all about propagating the API. So yes, this is about open stack, but it's really not about open stack. It's about openness. So we're, we're interested in crea creating an open ecosystem where it's not a Hotel California, you're not locked in, and ultimately, as I talk to developers and CIOs and enterprises, they don't want to get locked in either. They don't want to pay the VMware tax. They don't want to get locked into Microsoft or, or Amazon for that matter. And so, fast forward to today, um, you know, it's the reason I joined Cisco in August because Cisco is committed to building an open cloud, intercloud, and creating the largest happens to be OpenStack-based cloud focused on the enterprise. And for me, that's a really important thing that I want to go do, and that's why I'm here. And um, so I, I think what you'll discover over time is more things in Cisco opening up their APIs. And this slide was an interesting uh, comment. So this Aaron Levy, the CEO of a Box, met with the SVPs of Cisco in the December timeframe, so not too long ago. And he was asked the question, what could Cisco do better? And, 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 he, and he can only ask one question. He said, you know, just open up your APIs. You've got great technology, but I can't access them. Just give me open APIs. And so this message was delivered to Chuck, our new CEO, and Pankaj Patel, who's the EVP of Worldwide Engineering, and they got it, right? Like, we've got a lot of work to do to go and do this. But I, I think what you'll see is more and more APIs getting opened up around OpenStack. Um, and what that means for developers is we hope and, and we're going to encourage developers to develop against those APIs, take advantage of what the intercloud has to offer underneath, right? Because we're not building a commodity cloud. I built a commodity cloud. That is not what the Cisco intercloud is. I mean, it's carrier class. And it only matters if you take advantage of what's underneath. Otherwise, you know, why have a carrier class infrastructure? So to that end, since this is a technical audience, this is, this is the, uh, as technical as I'm going to get in this presentation, but this is really about differentiation around APIs and the, the underlying technology that InterCloud is bringing to bear from a Cisco perspective. And what we want to encourage is, you know, APIs at all the layers here, right? And opening up every single one of these and encouraging folks to write against them. And within the marketplace, we're going to roll out a certification process that incents folks to, to code against these. And if you do that, there will be rewards in doing that. But yeah, please take pictures. And, and if you do that, we're going to promote you, right? Because you're, you're taking full advantage of what the InterCloud has to offer. Now, obviously, if you don't want to go that deep, that's fine. Um, but you know, we're going to incent you to do so. And um, so if you take anything away from this conversation today, it's that this commitment to developers, commitment to APIs, commitment to openness, and making that all available in the InterCloud marketplace. That's what we're in focused on. And you know, specifically focused on big data, IOE, collaboration, video, the things that Cisco can, and obviously networking, um, that Cisco can bring its IP and understanding and market presence available to developers 
and IS, third party ISVs to help us all work better together and you know get more broader distribution in out in the in the market itself. So with that, here's a little bit of strategy. This is representing, in essence, this is the on Earth. So think of these as kind of you know layers of, of uh, and I can't remember them from uh, geology back in the day. But it, it, in the center, you got the core. This is the marketplace because it's really that aggregation point of, of all these things. And you know, at the next layer up, you've got the network apps like ASAV and um, CSR 1000. Um, we're making those available in the marketplace. And we're basically anything that can be run in the marketplace from Cisco, we'll get it in the marketplace over time. Everything's on its own course and speed, but that's what we're working with the teams to do. And then you've got Cisco SaaS like Spark and Meraki and, and WebEx. These are all uh, SaaS services that we want to make available in the marketplace over time and also make them available to developers so that they can embed these things into something net new, right? Because if it's net new, we all make more money. Um, and then kind of the next layer up, it's channel partners. And I see a gentleman from Presidio here. I mean, working very closely with Presidio and they've built a fantastic application on top of InterCloud Fabric that really shows the power of what InterCloud is doing today. And we want more partners like Presidio doing those things. And we're also gonna be leveraging Presidio as a go-to-market partner for the marketplace. Haven't locked it down, but we're having those discussions. And, um, you know, and because we're we're enabling the channel to deliver from a go-to-market, and that's not something the competition does. And then lastly, ISVs. So Cisco has a very large ISV business and portfolio today, and we want to encourage more third-party ISVs to not only participate in the marketplace, but also build their next-generation application on top of InterCloud and take advantage of those um, APIs. So I'm going to back up real quick. So there's three target customers we're going after. Developers, network-based service providers, enterprise, and then on the next slide, I'll, I'll bring in the channel partners. Um, why should developers care? We're going to provide a, a platform to build on. We're going to provide APIs. We're going to provide tools. And you know, if you want to build that next IoT, IOE app, come to Cisco. If you want to build the next um, collaboration and mobility application, come to Cisco. Um, if you want to build the next Web 2.0 application, you may not want to come to Cisco because that's not our focus. Our focus is in these key areas. And over time, you know, we could we could expand the focus. But to win, right? If you got to, you listen to John's keynote, when Cisco enters a market, it tends to to lead it, and that's our intent here. So we're focused on the areas where we can we can win. Network-based service providers. Question. So the question was, why is this better than AWS? So the answer is, we're partnering with these guys, right? So we've got the world's best backbone. So you know, our InterCloud Alliance partners today are Telstra and uh, Deutsche Telekom. They're the incumbents in their geography. And they have the, you know, the network backbone. So if your app needs its network sensitive, latency is a problem, and you want to deliver on data sovereignty, these are things that InterCloud can deliver on. Now clearly we need to go and get more InterCloud Alliance partners to do all of that, but where those things matter, the answer is, is the InterCloud. Where those things, you know, just going over the top matters, then yeah, I mean, you could definitely make an argument, why wouldn't you just develop on Amazon? It's probably cheaper, and you know they've got a footprint. Sure, um, but they're not focused here, right? And, and ultimately, the, we're focused on hybrid, we're focused on big data, IOE, IoT, and um, the enterprise itself, who cares about data sovereignty, who cares about, they, they, they want one throat to choke. Um, and for a developer, you gotta monetize your stuff. So even as I'm talking to ISVs today who sell on Amazon, I say, hey, do you want to sell on the channel? And they say, yes, please. Because we're, we're taking them where they don't go today. And you know, when I gave that demonstration of moving an app on-prem, Amazon doesn't do that. So the, the pitch is, write once, deploy anywhere. 
right? So write your app so it works on top of KVM Red Hat. You do that, you can work here. You can also, it'll work at HP Helion. It'll also work at Rackspace. Um, you know, I'd argue that the Red Hat distribution of OpenStack is going to be the winner there, so it's not wasted work. And if you heard Fayez talk about OpenStack Summit, um, a year ago, it was 1,000 people attending. This year, is 6,500. Yeah, so it's gaining momentum. And, you know, lastly on the enterprise, who cares? The CIO cares, right? Um, the CIO has workloads going to Amazon. That's a problem for them. You'll, you'll get a little tidbit of that at the 1 o'clock cloud keynote on why that's important. Um, they've got developers in-house today spinning up instances. They've got guys like me running lines of business who want to consume apps, and I don't have 12 weeks to wait for this app, so I'm, you know, in theory, I'm going to Amazon and, and doing that. So with things like InterCloud Fabric um, and ACI, we're bringing policy and control back to that CIO, and then with the marketplace, we can deliver the apps, the platform, and, and basically the flexibility and, and the affordability that they all want. So that's our mission there, and um, that's what we're building out. So very quickly, like based on a category, what are some of the areas that um, these folks care about? So enterprises, what do they care about? IOE, big data, right? If you didn't get that message from John on Monday, you weren't paying attention, right? This is the, the inflection point for Cisco. This is very real, and you'll see some examples in the keynote here shortly. Collaboration, Spark, it's hot. People want this thing. We're going to deliver it through the marketplace. Security, obviously security is job one with cloud. Backup, DR, very important use cases. Service providers, they care about monetizing their network. What does that? ISVs that monetize, Cisco SaaS, virtual managed services, ACI, and InterCloud Fabric and IaaS. Uh, channel partners like Presidio here, what do they care about? Well, they're building apps and services on top of this stuff, so they've done that, which is fantastic, and I encourage you to go look at what they've done. Um, and then, you know, they want to take advantage of the Cisco portfolio and, and la uh, basically create managed services around this stuff, and that's where they make money. Um, and then, you know, we work together on, on all this open stuff, and then they're taking advantage of, of ICF and, and, and IaaS. And then developer, we talked a lot about what developers are wanting, and uh, so we're bringing that to bear. And then one of the things you'll hear about in 10 minutes is a product that we're delivering called Shipped, which still is a platform for microservices. So with that, and here's some of the 35 ISVs we'll be announcing here in 10 minutes as well. So. I'm going to show a quick video, and then after I'm done with the video, I'll uh, open it up to some questions. Whoop, I just lost what I was doing, so bear with me. Here we go. Industries are becoming more digital and smarter. People, processes, data, and things are becoming more and more connected. As an IT leader, you need to enable business where it happens across industries, across regions, across clouds. Business without boundaries. You need services and applications that help support global sales with mobile apps, enhance productivity with employee services, or deploy resources where they are needed, as they are needed. Today, businesses use public cloud services without the proper control and compliance. So how can IT gain control while providing choice of applications to the business? Cisco InterCloud Marketplace. A global storefront that lets you purchase and deploy InterCloud delivered business applications and developer services from Cisco, the open source community, and independent software vendor or ISV partners, giving you a global reach with a regional footprint. Cisco InterCloud Marketplace features applications and services for a number of categories, including the Internet of Everything, Networking, Collaboration, Big Data, Application Development. Our ecosystem of partners includes ISVs who are onboarding their business apps to the Marketplace once for rapid availability across the InterCloud. The Cisco channel partners who bring the Marketplace to you can also offer value-added services and support that complement the marketplace offerings. Cloud provider partners can deliver differentiated ISV offerings, 
and additional cloud services, and with our entire ecosystem of partners, Cisco can help you enhance global reach and achieve regional data sovereignty compliance. For you, this means a single location for cloud applications and services, global reach with regional delivery for security and compliance, consistent application experience for your customers, partners, and employees, and unified global billing. Where are we going from here? You can expect the Cisco InterCloud Marketplace with partners globally and able to be delivered to your private on-premise catalog. Cisco InterCloud Marketplace, enabling business without boundaries. Exciting stuff, exciting stuff. So we've got about 10 minutes, so I want to open it up for a little, little uh, Q&A. Anybody have any questions? I answered all of them? I don't, I'm sure not. Thank you. Um, so partners are going to be able to access the marketplace, and are they going to provide a marketplace themselves to their own app developers? Yeah, so um, so partners are, are central to our strategy and, and to our delivery strategy. So um, while initially I don't have a white label version of this, we will have a white label version of this, right? So, um, you know, so like Presidio is an example. They're, they they'll want a marketplace, right? They have a version of a marketplace, and, but they want to, to take the apps that we have in here and make it available in their marketplace. We're working on that capability. Um, there are other uh, service providers, like tier two service providers, like a, like a I can't name a name, but because I'll get in trouble, but uh, there's one in Denver, who starts with an F. Um, they are interested, because they don't have a marketplace, can I just get the whole thing? And, you know, I'll take Cisco for now, but I want my branding eventually. Um, the way in which it's, it will be delivered from a go-to-market perspective is that the partner will do the financial transactions, so they'll do the billing, maintain that customer relationship, and if you're already a Cisco partner, you'll be using like the CCW tool, if you're familiar with that. Uh, not the most user-friendly tool, but it works. Um, and then over time, we'll, we'll roll out some other business models that are a little more user-friendly um, and have slightly different capabilities. But um, we want to just get out there, get in market, go with things that, that partners understand and we know work. And we're trying to do you know, DevOps, like let's go, let's go fast, let's get MVP in market. And you know, we plan on launching this thing in the, uh, in the fall time frame, hopefully sooner than that if we can get our velocity up there. And, um, but we're working really hard and you know, you, we can show you live code and apps being deployed right now, um, you know, but we're not where we wanna be, we will get there and we're moving quick. You look like you have a question, do you have a question? Okay, no question. Um, anybody else? No, we got a question here. He, he's gonna give you a mic. Hi. Um, could you tell us what the prerequisites are for a service provider or a partner to actually join the marketplace as a as a sort of a downstream provider rather than as an upstream seller? If I've got that the right way around. Yeah. So that that's not an. So if you want to be a service provider, if you want to be like a like a, a DT or a Telstra, I'd have to uh, hand you off to our our sales team that owns that. I, I don't really know the criteria there. Um, I do know at least from a, like kind of the, the, the cornerstone ones, right? We're really looking, in a perfect world, they're the big incumbents. They've got that backbone. They're the, the traditional telcos. And, and the reason for that is, um, one, they've, they've really got to monetize that, that network, so they're incented to do this. And then also, we can, we can go to that enterprise and say, you've got one throat to choke for cloud and carriage, one SLA, and that's a very, very strong statement that Amazon, Microsoft, Google can't do. Um, although Google's buying up fiber here and there and everywhere, so I, I won't underestimate them. But that's 
you know, from, from that core capability, uh, that's, I think, part of the criteria. And then in terms of, like, if you've got this great service that you want in the marketplace, right now, it's a conversation with myself and my team, right? And, and ultimately, what we want to enable is we don't want a Me Too marketplace. We, you know, there's table stakes things that, that you need to have as a developer, right? So every marketplace is going to have MongoDB and Chef and Puppet and all those fun things. Those are great. Um, but we want things that leverage Cisco IP, partner IP, create something net new, because we don't want to have an app store. We want to have a solutions marketplace, because solutions marketplaces are what customers want. They, don't, they want the easy button to solve a problem. And you know, we want to create that ecosystem to do that. And if, and if you have something along those lines that's focused on some of the key areas, like big data collaboration, and, and what have you, by all means, come visit me. I'll be manning the booth, booth seven in the cloud area from four to seven today. So, question. Hi, um, <clears throat> I work with virtualized test. Yeah, it's all right. I work in uh, virtualized test net, and I'm just thinking, is there a space here for testing in your marketplace, like you as a service, or so actually testing? T so, testing what? What do you guys test? Emulate users on a network doing things like making voice calls, making video sessions, transferring data, emulating users in the network. So, so the question was, he, he works for a he, he works for a. So the answer is, I think I think the the answer is probably yes, right? We we want to have tools in the marketplace that are virtualized and they can run on on OpenStack, and it's something that a developer would use. Um, then yeah, we should talk. We should uh, come by the uh, the booth from four to seven if you can, and uh, and if you can't, just drop me an email. It's gisrael at cisco dot com, and uh, happy to follow up. Sure. Uh, it's the cloud. We're in here, uh, number seven. Sure, sounds good. Any other questions? Um, why don't we kind of stop here and let everybody run to the cloud keynote? Um, I encourage everybody to do so. Lots of uh, fun and interesting stuff happening there. And I'm going to run there myself. So thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Have a good show.